Folks, in this video today, I want to go ahead and go over the first day of practice for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 2023 rookie mini camp i know that we are technically in day number two right now i'll have a video reviewing that either later today or possibly tomorrow but i felt like it was important to go over day number one because there was a lot of things in that day one that i think are worth talking about some reports have been coming out of how that practice went we're going to be talking about those reports from our friends over at pewterreport.com, buccaneers.com, and all those other sources in between. But let's go ahead and first talk about one of the first players that jumped off the page to me, which was former Kansas State wide receiver and current undrafted free agent wide receiver for the Bucs, Cade Warner, who apparently looked very good in terms of running great routes, having good hands, and just overall being a smart and crafty type of player. Scott Reynolds of PewterReport.com compared him to a bigger version of Adam Humphreys, who we all know had a mainstay on the Buccaneers roster for a couple of seasons throughout his early career and was overall a very efficient and good wide receiver. Scott Reynolds went even as far as to say that to not be surprised if Warner does make the roster as a wide receiver six due to his special teams ability. Also, some other guys who got some credit here were Buccaneers wide receivers coach Brad Idzik and new Bucks offensive coordinator Dave Canales who were just all around the place working with a ton of guys and just showing a ton of really really great energy throughout the process. You also had Cody Mock, who was working with pretty much exclusively Harold Goodwin throughout this practice. He is going to be a guy that is going to be competing for that starting right guard spot if he is able to show good progression and growth throughout these off-season practices. But the next guy I want to talk about is going to be the Buccaneers' first-round draft pick, Kalija Kansi, who showed great athleticism, great quickness, great explosiveness throughout the first day of practice. That is all things that... Pretty much should have been expected, right? Because coming out of the draft, everybody knew that Kalaja Kansi was an athletic specimen. He was a dude that was going to be quick, that was going to be explosive, that has great size at six foot one, two hundred and eighty-six pounds, and is hopefully going to be an absolute force for this Buccaneers defense, specifically in that front seven. So it is good to see that he is going and showcasing why the Tampa Bay Buccaneers drafted him for that athleticism, for that quickness, for that overall speed that the Buccaneers were sorely lacking in that defense. You also have another really interesting situation here. As you see here, Yaya Diaby is wearing number zero. He is the first Tampa Bay Buccaneer player to ever wear number zero. According to Yaya Diaby, he said that nobody else basically wanted the number and that he decided to have that number. The team has a number zero, which I think is pretty cool. You also see Jose Ramirez here standing next to Yaya Diaby. Both these guys are going to be experimental, definitely rotational types of pass rushers for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've both got some very good size. Yaya Diaby, six foot three, 263 pounds. Jose Ramirez, six foot two, 242 pounds. Both of these guys are probably going to have some role in some way, shape or form in the Buccaneers pass rushing. And I think that they both are going to be pretty productive. And it seems like they both had a pretty decent day one of practice and especially did some work on special teams type of stuff that where that is where they their niches are probably going to be. But also continuing with the draft picks, you have Servassier Dennis, who actually had a really good day of practice today. He picked off a pass. He took it for a touchdown in 11 on 11 drills. He overall had a really, really good day of practice. He's a very good linebacker, folks. I said this after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers drafted him, and it seems like he is starting to showcase what he can do. He can play multiple inside linebacker positions wherever he is needed. He is a good pass rusher. He's got obviously good coverage ability. He was able to get an interception and return it to the house in the first day. He's a great leader. That has been talked about at Pitt as well. According to Todd Bowles, Servassier played a lot of what we play here. He played in college. He's very bright. He can play multiple spots. He can cover. He can blitz. He can scrape. He can do a lot of things, and he's a very heady football player. You usually 
don't get that later in the draft, so we felt good about that when we took him. You even had Kalaja Kansi say earlier this week that Servasier Dennis is a good leader and a great football player, so that's just a very fantastic thing to see. Another linebacker who showcased some good things was undrafted rookie linebacker Jeremy Banks. He had a 4.53 40-yard dash, I guess I should say, coming out of the draft and going into the NFL, and he was just covering a lot of ground quickly throughout this practice. He did it a ton at Tennessee. He's got some good ability, and I think that Banks is going to be a guy that could potentially crack this Buccaneers 53-man roster after practice. Bowles said, obviously, Banks was a heck of a player at Tennessee. They had a good defense, and he just knows where the ball is on tape. He found the ball, and hopefully he can do the same thing here. Rounding out some defensive guys here, in terms of safeties and whatnot, you have undrafted free agent safeties Kayvon Merriweather and Chris Eisen, who both did some pretty good things. Todd Bowles said, Christian reminds me of Winfield a little bit in the way he plays. Talking about Chris Eisen there. He's not the same guy, but obviously he has a burst and he's very physical down there. Merriweather was a very good tackler in college. He's built up pretty good. You can mistake him for a linebacker if you're not careful. You look for those guys to learn the system and get on even footing and then kind of see where they are but you kind of like the guys you've got coming in, especially if you got them in free agency. Those two guys could have been drafted. So, hey, pretty big props there to Kayvon Merriweather and Chris Eisen in that mix as well. As I said, I'm probably going to be making a separate video talking about the top undrafted free agents to keep an eye on, but it seems like there are a few that are making some really good impressions. You take a look at, obviously, you know, Warner here, a wide receiver coming out of Kansas State. He is a guy that is going to be doing some interesting things. Cade Warner is. You obviously take a look at some of the linebackers. You've got Jeremy Banks in there. He was an undrafted guy. He pretty much could have been drafted. You've got Kayvon Merriweather. You've got Chris Eisen, a couple of safeties there who are doing some good things as well. And you cannot forget about Yaya Diaby, Jose Ramirez, also, Kalaja Gansi in there as well. Seems like there's a lot of young guys who are making some very good first impressions for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this first day of rookie minicamp. But folks, what do you guys think about these? What players are you looking forward to seeing here going throughout the remainder of rookie minicamp and throughout the remainder of the offseason workouts as well? I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, folks, I'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.